at the moment we're chopping down forests to grow more food and there are a billion hungry people in the world and at the same time we waste one third of the entire world's food supply we're hemorrhaging out food at every link in the supply chain on farms at sea when we catch fish in factories in restaurants in shops and of course in our own homes the situation is tragic but the thing to emphasize is that it is also a huge opportunity if we need to reduce our environmental impact which we do if we need to increase food supplies for people who need it most which we do stopping wasting food is a really good easy practical way to start because the solutions are relatively simple i.e eating and enjoying food rather than throwing it away Det vi gör är att få en god del mat, så tillbereder vi maten och lagar en buffé och så har vi det i gata da, på lördag och folk kommer förbi och äter och så det blir egentligen en stor matträff men med kasta mat eller mat som skulle vara kasta. så vill vi så det här är ju mat till mot hunger så så det går ut på att donationer som vi får från <laughs> för gästarna där går till kyrkans nöde på sitt arbete mot uh, hungersnöd i, i Västafrika i Mali den här gången. Uh, we started this in uh, 2011 when there was a big uh, hunger crisis on the African Horn and we knew that at the same time we throw an enormous amount of food in Norway and we saw this big sad contrast and we wanted to do something with both the hunger and the food throwing. So we combined these two big challenges and made the feast against famine. I uh, talked to Evan and he want, he said it's a good idea. He wanted to be a part of it. So then me and him start to plan the whole thing. And, and then we, we hold it in Oslo last uh, fall in October. And then it was good. A lot of people came, a lot of attention in the media, and yeah, even the org big organizations like uh, Norwegian Church Aid, Act Alliance, Framtid Nu Händer, they were interested. The media's were interested. And then we re we want we said uh, okay, we can hold it again. We do it now this time in a national style, uh, getting groups of people from the other parts like in Bergen in Troms, uh, Trondheim, now here in Aarhus and in Oslo to do the national uh, Matgilde mot Hungersnöd. Um, so this is where we are now. Yesterday we had it here in Aarhus and then on the 9th of June we are going to have it all over the other places, the big cities in Norway. And there are a lot of people being part of this. And Ja, nei, men kjøtt har vi masse av allerede. Vi har, vi har fått... Ja, ja, ja. Det... Ja, men det er råbra, det trenger vi altså. Det er egentlig frukt og grønt vi mangler, vi skorter litt på. Ja, så det har vi en del av. Ok. Så det kan man sette en eske bak her på lageret. Mhm. Ja, men det er kjempebra hvis jeg kan komme om en liten time og, og plukke det opp. Ja, Nei, men det er greit, det står i eskere, så da kan man lære seg å sette det bak. Da har jeg en del lærere som er plukket ut nå, ikke nødvendig nå. Så. Ja, men det er kjempebra, altså. Vi er takknemlig. Ja. Det eneste vi ikke kan ta imot, da, men det har med det der uh, Mattelsynet gjør. Vi kan ikke bruke ut, altså sist, det som har gått ut på etter for, siste forbruksdag, uh, kjøtt, altså. Men når det har gått over siste forbruksdag, da kan ikke vi bruke det. Men eh, ellers så alt som best før, og frukt og grønt og så videre, det kan vi jo bruke. Mm. Ja. Ja, så vi. Yes. Er det bra? Ser du, ser du hva det kaster hver hvilken som helst dag? Mm. Ja. Det er godt at de hjelper oss med dette. Yes. Croutons, mer uh, juicy chicken. Ja, yeah, det er veldig godt. Society as a whole needs to change in order to solve this problem. At the moment, it's an everyday occurrence. We throw away food into the bin without even thinking about it. 
we need to change our cultural values so that it becomes socially unacceptable to waste food. I always think of when I first turned up in Xinjiang province in western China and I met some Ugyo people who live there and I was finishing a bowl of rice in a restaurant and the chef had come down to talk to me and halfway through the conversation he started frowning into my bowl and I, I knew I'd offended him but I didn't have any idea what I had done but he pointed at three grains of rice in the bottom of my bowl and he said clean and he was really pleased as he saw me finishing up my rice. He explained to me that they have a taboo against wasting food. We need to start valuing food, to recognize that the resources that we expend in producing food, the labor, the fossil fuels, the water, and most importantly, the land that we use to grow food is far too valuable to waste. <laughs> yes. This is the waste. But it's not waste. Junk food, proper. This yeah. one is gonna give a um, proper life to a hungry fellow tomorrow. Look at this. They look like tuna fish almost. Very beautiful. Yeah. And the strawberries are perfect. <laughs> yes, he was probably laughing and, and with a beer in his back pocket at me. <laughs> and the guest was drunk? He was drunk? Yes! Yeah, no way! Were you going to play the best dance last week? Did you play the best dance last week? Did you play the best dance last week? No, I played it. So you have your own job? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's, it's snowing outside. I don't understand why this is happening to us. Are we bad people? To be? Huh? Mm -hmm. So why the weather uh, turns out to be snowy? <laughs> it has been 15 degrees plus every day now. We have been walking bare over. Shit. Challenge. It's a challenge. I don't see how it will run, but we just what I want to happen is that this snow will just uh, this sun will come out and shine it all away shine the snow away it's ridiculous it was not supposed to snow Her allerede, det er et av konkrete løsningstiltakene, jeg tenker at vi må si til dem at vi vi ønsker dem virkelig, det utfordrer dem til å lage regler og rutiner som gjør at vi, det ikke kaster så mye mat. Ja, og så kan du si for eksempel, men var litt forsiktig med å gi eksempler, for da henger man seg veldig opp i de eksemplene i stedet for å se det litt større bilde. At vi må tillate for eksempel også folk å hente mat, ansatte brukere, at de selger mat som er i ferd med å gå ut bilder og så videre. Det er mange ting vi kan gjøre sammen, at vi i hvert fall utfordrer dem til å de også må ta et ansvar, de store matvarekjedene. Altså det viktigste jeg kan gjøre er å passe på å kjøpe inn. La det heller gå tomt i hyllene av og til enn at dere alltid skal bygne. Eh, bestill inn mindre. Pass på at det ikke er en bestill for mye. Ja. Det, det må, sånn som der har vi på en måte... Men det tenker jeg at det kommer i forhold til media, så er det litt vanskelig å begynne å gå så spist til hver. I didn't, I didn't understand it, because it's already started the summer and we were uh, preparing for a nice sunny day. 
you know, wake up and it's been, uh, it's snow and and I start worry because I I was thinking maybe the whole arrangement will become impossible out in the streets and with all that food no people not the market day you know, it's snowing so I was but but then um, you know we just see now one hour more one hour more and then it stopped and then the sun comes out and then eventually when the when the barbecue was up and running the sun was out shining and the music came on and the people were there and so there were plenty of people even though I was stressed a little bit when I saw the snow in the morning but it was away already the, by the time that the arrangement was starting the event was kicking off it, it wasn't really it was no snow left was it no rain <laughs> We got the power. We got the power. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, so put him up. What's wrong? The chicken is ready for the day. So this is what we're going to cast today. Yeah. Where are we going to cast today? Yeah. Hey. What? It's so good. Yeah, because you, when you when you looked at me, you looked really like. Yeah, I was not there. Det blir faktisk her. Funker det her? People will ask, why do you throw all this food? And they see this, all this nice, this world buffet. And they, they, they have to question. So all this food was supposed to be thrown away. And uh, when they... When they realize it's already some of the achievement is done. Most Norwegian people, they are well-meaning, but they don't know what's going on. Throwing all this uh, good food, it doesn't make sense. So, so by showing the people that's nonsense, I guess that's the, the way to, to do it. And now we have, we have made um, a recipe for making matgjelde mot hungersnöd that we have sent to the different groups around. And then when there are one group who wants to do, do this, then we are sending them the recipe and the posters and everything they need, and then they, they arrange it home in their community. So I like that to happen more. It's it's fun. It's a good thing to see this spread. I was asked to arrange Matilde Bergen by Evan and Elias, who were the people who uh, initiated the project. And I didn't really have time to do it at the point, but it was such a good project that I was, I just had to say yes. It was very easy to get people to participate and a lot of people was, I, I lost count of how many people were in, involved in the end, but lots of volunteers who helped to different degrees. Some people helped a lot, some people helped a little bit and all the, also counting all the people who gave us equipment and all these things for free and they would bring it to us they would come and get it afterwards and we didn't we didn't spend any money in the end only a little bit on gas for for the cars but except for that it was all the, the people wanting to help the project because they thought it was a good project but the bands we had were in most cases people we know you know Bergen is small so you can use the network you have and we had uh, one person uh, that was in charge of the artists and um, and uh, she would get some of the artists but most my, well a lot of us we would we would uh, sort of uh, use our connections to get people and it was very easy to find people who wanted to play for free and and to support a project and yeah after that, we are going to put some different measures. Alors, first of all, we put the uh, uh, two measures of And this is a bit like you want as well. If you want very strong, you put strong. If you don't like very strong, you put less. Okay, we continue the recipe. You listening? <laughs> okay, we continue the recipe. <laughs> Vida de 
esencia como tú y yo pues nada es difícil sin que alguien lo permitió confía en tu camino y tú I find it tragic that so much food is thrown away and it's good food it's food that there's nothing wrong with it in, in many cases uh, and I find that this is, is one of the maybe the, one of the biggest issues that we can work on to, to uh, help the environment, to, to address the disequality in the world, uh, in, in, in relation to poverty and these things. It's so, such a massive aspect of, of the problems we have today and which we can actually do something about. Det har kommit fram till genom 28 års tänkning och forskning är att det som är drivkrafterna bak utvecklingen idag det är tre ting. Det är egoism, materialism och kapitalism. Egoismen och materialismen sitter inne i oss själv. Kapitalismen är bara en yttre genspegling av detta. Ju vi kan om oss själv så vill det inte ske något med det yttre. Så det blir inte någon bärkraftig utveckling för vi inte längre är egoister och materialister. Alltså för vi skapar det som jag kallar en hjärtekultur, en kultur där vi frivilligt lar andres behov betyd och naturens krav betyd lika mycket som våra egna. Yes, our main goal with uh, this project is to reduce food throwing and uh... There are, I think, three paths to, to follow. One is uh, private persons. They uh, stand for about 80% of the food throwing in Norway. So we need to change their attitudes, change their routines, make them at home not throw as much food as they do today. And then we also need to work with the big food chains and the grossists and uh, help them to uh, develop routines so that they don't throw away food that is about to go out on dates. And then third, uh, the rules I think in Norway uh, that uh, regulate uh, how food shall be handled. And these rules are developed and implemented by Matilsyne, the food uh, yeah, authority in Norway. And we need to make sure that they not only help us not to serve bad food but that they also contribute to good food not being thrown away my friend we uh, we always have a focus on not throwing food away so uh, we always have a little corner in the shop where we put food to a reduced price and uh, we also have uh, some deals with some companies and cafes mm. so they can come and get the food for free. We have like Berg and Folkeköken for example. They, uh, they make a vegan meal uh, every week so people can come and eat for free. So that's a good feeling, not throwing food away. Uh, we throw away around maybe below 1%. So that's not much. And that's food that's rotten and uh, that can that's not eatable at all. I think the real solution lies with us and with social values, like I was saying. But of course, governments can play a role as well. One of the principal uh, issues of governance and legislation that I'm campaigning on the moment is actually the the law on feeding food waste to livestock. Since 2001. This practice of recycling food waste back into food by feeding it to pigs and chickens, which is thousands of years old and which humans have been happily doing for that long. Uh, in 2001 it was banned and it's now a European Union piece of legislation and of course Norway uh, binds itself to this piece of legislation as well. Uh, with the result that we have millions of tons, hundreds of millions of tons of food waste being discarded. And at the same time, we import 40 million tons of soya from South America every year to feed our livestock. And of course, the production of soya in South America is contributing to deforestation and water depletion and soil erosion and the rest of it. And of course, global warming. 20% you know, of all global warming comes from deforestation. And we should cancel those two things out. We should be feeding our livestock with waste and we should not be growing soya and other crops that can be eaten by people 
and then feeding it to, uh, to livestock. And so one of the principal pieces of legislation is we need to lift this ban. In other countries like Japan and South Korea, it's not illegal to do it. In fact, the governments encourage it. They subsidize farmers who uh, recycle waste in that way. And of course, those farmers that are massive economic advantage because they can buy cheap food waste instead of over expensive human food to feed their livestock. Um, so that's one piece of legislation that needs to change. Um, but I think most of the answers actually are, are not in the hands of governments. They're in our hands. They're in the hands of the market. And, and that's where we need to focus a lot of our attention. People stop and stare. I can see their faces Over the shadows of The sun keeps shining through the pouring rain. Go where the weather suits my clothes. Banking off of a northeast wind, sailing on summer breeze. Skipping over the ocean like a stone.